let me just, I'm going to log into the meeting on a different computer real quick here. All right. All right. So, good morning. Um, oh, okay. Thank God that you're able to connect again. So, let's start. Yes. Yes. So. All right. So let's ready. let's let's pray. All right. Hold on a second here. Well, we want to just thank you for the opportunity to come and, and present uh, natural remedy. I'm upside down. Oh, hold on a second. Am I am I sideways or is this? How are yeah, you guys viewing us? Is this sideways? sideways. You're sideways. It's not oh. straight. <laughs> That's strange. Okay. That's good. I think that's a good thing to know. <laughs> that would have been awkward. All right. Let's see. How did it work last time? Yeah, that's right here. All right. All right. All right. Sorry, we're using a different a different iPhone. So okay. thank you guys for the invitation of coming here and presenting a natural remedy on how to relieve release, sorry, body stress, and also uh, a shortened cooking school. So we appreciate the time that we have with you. And um, between the, you know, the body relaxing techniques that you're going to be seeing and the cooking school, we'll have a small intermission just so we can set up the tables and everything. So if you see okay. it black out after we're done with the massage, don't leave. We still have another section as well. And All if right. you guys truly enjoy this, we can definitely have a different um, cooking school. Uh, a more lengthy one where you get to see more recipes and um, how to how to make a food that not only you know looks good but also tastes good as well. So let's get started. We'll we'll start off with prayer and then we'll get going. Um, dear Father, we want to thank you and praise you for the opportunity to be here, to be your hands and your feet. We ask that those things that are taught here are not only kept for ourselves but are shared amongst our friends, our family members, and those that are near us. Um, we ask that you please hide us behind the cross that we may not represent ourselves, but we may represent you and um, be with us now that everything may go according to your will. We thank you for providing everything that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. You don't, do you want to listen in just to make sure? Yeah. All right, so Rachel and I are going to teach you, I think, one of the most exciting natural uh, remedies that you could learn. I think everybody loves this one. And as Pedro already said, and the main thing that this is going to do, this body work is going to do for you is relax the muscles, but it also helps with good circulation. It helps to circulate lymph. Um, it helps to relax the muscles, relieve tension and stress, and everybody needs a little bit of this. So we're just going to show you some simple little things that you could do. Um, you can teach someone else to give it to you, or you can do it for someone else. Now you see we're set up here with these fancy type of uh, massage chairs, we call them, um, but you don't need this. All you need is a chair and a back, pretty much, right? So a simple chair that your, your client is sitting on and if they're bent over this way, you can go ahead and do this technique. 
All right. So we want to, of course, make sure that we've gotten permission from our client to give them this wonderful treatment. That's the first thing. Um, then we want to make sure that our hands are clean because we will be touching the body, uh, like the neck um and and shoulders sometimes the hands so we want to make sure that our hands is, are, are clean and we've already done that and then we'll move right into our massage or our body work is the word. and we've written out here um some of the moves that we'll be doing if you can't see it we'll call it out um the first the first stroke or the first technique um yeah the first stroke that we'll be doing is called the shoulder compress and this one starts in front of the client. So we'll be standing in front of the client. It's good to have a good solid stance. So, um, well, you can't see our feet, but just make sure that you're, you're uh, nice and grounded uh, on the ground. And we're just gonna push into those shoulders because most times that's where um, you're holding the tension in your body, right? Especially for females a lot of times or, um, people who are you know doing a lot of physical labor um you have the tension built up in your shoulders right i mean if you just go ahead and feel your shoulders right now that feels good so we'll start with the shoulders just simple compressions no kneading or you know squeezing anything yet just pushing back and forth there and always ask your client how she's doing so um how how is the pressure Good. How's the pressure over there? Yeah. All right. All right. So we've done a good bit of compressions. Let's move to the, the back now and do what we call shoulder squeezes. So we come to the back and we're just going to squeeze and lift. Squeeze and lift. Now, when you put your hand on the shoulder, you kind of feel a little bone in the front here where your four fingers are landing. And that's your collarbone. And you don't, you don't necessarily want to pull on a bone. Just, it isn't comfortable. So if you feel the bone, just slide back a little bit. And we're going to get this nice, meaty muscle texture um, right here. So we're going to go ahead and nice squeeze in there. All right. And then we're going to move to our spinal compressors. Just compressions we're just pushing into the body um, at the client's tolerance um, one thing to remember when we get to the spine very important we never want to push on the spine again just like we mentioned for the collarbone going ahead teaching You hand the rest. Jerry, are you saying that you want it to be only on here? I got your text message in front of me, Jerry. Oh, well, that would be funny. Yes. Oh, I got it on. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes, Brother Jerry. Yes, Brother Jerry. Yeah. So you only want to do audio in that video? Yeah, do audio only for now. Yeah, like you said, yeah. Um, is there a reason that we can't we can't show the video?
Hello everyone, sorry about the DVD here, but we'll get back to you as soon as possible, okay? Okay. But if I draw you there, Okay. It's, it's good to see you all here. So let's bear with us as we are correcting this technical difficulty. While we are waiting, how is everybody? Hello, I see brother, uh, brothers and sisters here. So how was your Sabbath? How was everything going? It is going well, Sister Saholi. How are you? Good, praise the Lord, yes. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in, in Zoom yesterday, but you know, see you face to face, face to face, but yeah. Very good, very good. Yes, praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for getting, for uh, bringing this presentation to us. We're, we're blessed. Praise the Lord. We just need to do God asks us to do. So thank you for joining me. Then. Our yes. prayer is that we can use it. So we'll have... Uh, benefit out of this. So thank you. Amen. Share it also. Yes. Our friends and loved one. Yeah. Is it back? No? No. Brother Jerry, just a quick question. Um, I just spoke to um, someone about the recording. I think it's okay that we okay. record it if, if, if necessary, just so we can, it's easier to instruct them on how to do this if they can see what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're back. Okay. All right. So I think where we left off was spinal compressions. And so we're just going to continue from there. And um, compressions just giving a nice um, pressure pushing into the back. Um, with the spine, anytime you're doing anything with the spine, we never want to put pressure directly 
on the spine, just like before I was talking about the bone, the collarbone in the front here, these are the spine is also uh, um, some bones in there. So never on the spine at the side of the spine. Here we go. And you can do alternating if you like. You will just rest them, relax them. Bones in there. All right, we're gonna go on to thumb, a uh, spinal thumb circle. So thumbs, and we're just gonna do little circles right again along the spine, um, not on the bone itself, right? And with this one, you can get a little bit deep, deeper and more specific than the full hand compression that you did before. So we're gonna go down the back this way. And usually when you're doing this, people are like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, th that knot, I could feel that, that area that's really tight. Um, the thumbs could really get in there um, to feel below just the, the, the superficial surface of the skin. Um, so pay attention to that as you are doing your massage. So I'm making my way all the way down the back. Not too low, you know, just to where the um, under, under the skirt or the pants stops. And then we're gonna go all the way back. Okay, so we've done a good bit for the spine. The spine will help with anything. When we relax the muscles of the spine, we actually can free the entire upper body. If I'm having um, tension in the back, maybe from holding my bag or um, doing a repetitive action, if you're working typing or something, right? So we loosen those muscles. So the entire upper body should begin to feel a little looser. We've loosened the shoulders, and now we're gonna move to the arms. So you can do this either together, um, just doing some squeezes to the arm, right? Or you could do it individually. I mean, if you really think about it, the parts of the body that we use the most are our appendages, so the, um, the arms and the legs. We won't be doing the legs in this routine, but we can definitely get some of those arm muscles, you know, those triceps and biceps, we call them. All right. And you can even go all the way across to the next one. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna move to the neck, right? Neck base of the base of the head and neck. Um, we come to the side of the client. You can stand in the back if you like, but the side is um, the best spot. And this is a really delicate area. Um, we have a lot of nerves here, but we also have some strong muscles. So we're gonna start with just gently doing just a squeeze, kind of pulling up a little bit and ask your client, how's, how's that? Okay, there we go. All right. This would be the area that we would work on if you're having any, um, let's say, major headaches, right? Everybody has a headache from time to time. Um, of course, there are other things that you want to do if you're having headaches, maybe like drinking water and so on, but this can help to relieve some of that, um, some of those muscle. Um, tight muscles in the head. All right, and we're gonna do, do that with both hands now, kind of like a scooping motion, one hand, the other hand, one hand, the other hand, right? Again, a lot, um, this is a lot, a fragile area. So softer and slower than we did it on the back. All right. I'm gonna go right up to the base of her neck here, or the base of the head, um, right? 
in that occipital region or right at the base of the head, right where the hairline begins. And you're doing circles. All right. I'm gonna move down. So we've done the neck, we've loosened the neck, we've loosened the shoulders, we've loosened the arms, at least the upper arm. We've done some things to the back. And really, this is just a five minute um, re natural remedy to relax the body. We're not um, gonna try to work any specific areas in this. Um, routine. And I think that just simple routine alone will make your client feel um, very, very good. So we're going to move down to what we call knuckle twist to the back. And so we're going to have knuckles or fist, however you want to say that. And we're going to just do twist, 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 maybe like your uh, twisting dough or I don't know, whatever you do like this, like your kneading, kneading dough. There we go. Kneading dough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, up and down. It's a little different. You may think, why am I doing this and then this? And isn't it the same move? Well, it actually stimulates the muscle in a different direction. So um, the muscle feel, feels different when you do all these different types of moves um, in the same areas. All right. And then we end with something called tapotement. And honestly, I think the is just to wake your client up after sleeping. So <laughs> we do this little, um, it's short and quick, but not deep, we're not hitting, right? Short and quick, um, all the areas that we massaged. Um, we wanna stay away from the neck, maybe a little bit on the neck, but again, a very fragile area. So short and quick. All right, and the client is starting to wake up. Oh, oh, okay, I guess it's time. And then we end with our nerve stroke. And um, this kind of flushes the tissue. See, um, during your massage, as you were working the muscle and the lymph, you were mobilizing toxins, you were um, you mobilizing the good and the bad, even the white blood cells and so on. So this long, stroke helps to kind of flush the tissues um, to clear them out from you know what what we were doing all right so that is the end of our routine um, we can either go to questions or we can review them quickly again maybe we should do that again okay yes Yeah, we'll just go through them. All right. So to begin, we're going to start in the front. Um, first thing, always ask permission from your client if it's okay to do this. But of course, I'm sure they will be if they're here sitting in your chair. Secondly, you don't need this fancy chair. You can use a regular chair that um, with, with, with your person leaning over. So this is good to try first on a family member, maybe like your spouse or son or you know brother, sister, uh, before doing it on someone else. Then third, wash hands. Always wash hands before. All right, first thing, shoulder compressions. We're just pushing into the shoulders here, avoiding any bone. You really, you want it to feel spongy. Um, that's what muscle feels like, okay? So shoulder compressions. Then we move to the back. We do sh uh, shoulder squeezes. Squeezing, pulling up on that upper area, uh, upper shoulder. Most people say this feels so good, but not too much. Is it too much to take okay. <laughs> Always to the tolerance of your client. All right, then spinal compression, both hands full palm compression on both sides of the spine, never on the spine itself. Up and down, 
Then we do thumb circles, the same um, up, up and down on the sides of the spine. And with this, we can, be, we can get a little bit more specific and the deeper. And as you do it, you, you can immediately tell, oh, she has, you know, some tight spots here, tight spots here. Um, and you can spend some time working on those areas. Just one thing, try not to damage your thumb or put too much pressure on your thumb because it can, it's a, a smaller finger that can be, um, uh, can be worked too much. So uh, the way that we try not to put too much pressure on a thumb is not using our arms, but actually using body, your body weight. So one thing there about the thumb. So thumb circles all the way down and then up, back. Right, and then we're going to do arm compressions, very similar to what we did uh, the neck. We could do them uh, to simultaneously together. All right, there we go, or one at a time. Nice squeeze, squeeze and hold. All right, then we're going to, that was arm compressions. We're gonna work on the neck for our headaches or just having a stressful day at work and we need to release some of this tension. We're gonna do that neck squeeze. There we go. And one hand, the other hand. Okay, giving Rachel time to check to that. All right, and then we'll just move on to the knuckle twist. Let's do that one together. And knuckle twist to the back. Twist, twist, twist. Like a um, kneading, kneading the bread or dough or, you know. All right, and then to potment, stimulate those muscles, wake your client up. Uh, potment to all the areas that you've worked on. Simple. So this is a kind of like claws and uh, not full hands, but yeah, the tops of my fingers. Any clients back, short and rapid, and then flush the tissues with the nerve stroke. All right. And we're all done. <laughs> That's it. You should feel all good. How do you feel? Yay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, we shall get that massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Very nervous, happy, but I said, oh, I wish that sh they will do it to me now. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Pause the 
Okay, everyone. I hope that uh, you learned something with that uh, session of relaxation. So as they're going to move for the next uh, program, then we can talk a little bit. How do you think about it? Can you apply it to your family or to yourself? I think that you cannot do yourself. Maybe the neck part, you can do it. But for the rest of it, you need someone to do that massage. Yes. Very interesting, uh, Sister Saholi, the presentation. Yeah. You know, if you go to take that little massage somewhere, then you pay a lot of money, but then God, they give it to us, so you don't need to go and pay money. Yes. It was very good. Yes. Yes. They said it's good for stress. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that I haven't had any stress since I've been home. Ah! When I was at work, I was stressed out. These, these past few weeks have been the most stress-free. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm home. That's good for you, brother. You, so you, you stress when you go to work, but not stress when you're home right now. That's a blessing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, Brother Jackie. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm enjoying this, man. <laughs> yes, yes. It is a blessing. Yes. <laughs> Sister Sahole, did you mention how long is the massage? Uh, she said um, five minutes, the minimum. You can ask them question after. But you know... Five minutes minimum, okay. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, because more than five minutes is. Oh, yeah. They're back. Okay. All right. Well, we're back on. And so now this is going to be Sister Nikki, who's going to be presenting this cooking demo. Good morning, Sister Nikki. Good to see you. Good morning. Sister Yeah, so. Um, uh, the audio is not clear. The audio is not clear. Okay. Hello? Much better. Um, if there's on a chat. Okay, much better? You sure, Pedro, you don't want to keep one? Okay. All right, so just um, let me know. Um, any questions, I can answer them afterwards. So welcome again, Jackson Heights Church and any visitors that are there. I'm gonna be showing you some amazing breakfast recipes and a lot of it is sugar-free and oil-free today. Now I know with all the illnesses and the concerns that everyone is having, you really want to have a diet that is oil-free and sugar-free to help keep down inflammation. And one of the things too that will help keep down inflammation is having um, a good um, balanced breakfast. And so I'm just gonna show you something that can be of assistance to many of you. Um, why a good breakfast and why is it called breakfast? Well, you know that breakfast means you're breaking the fast. So overnight you're resting, your stomach is resting and it's a good thing to break the fast with a healthy um, balanced diet. So. I'm just gonna give you an illustration of what really happens to us when um, we often skip breakfast. So what is a typical meal for many Americans today? I'm just gonna give you a quick illustration. Is usually, what do we do? Now this is a person, sorry for my picture. And usually, I'm gonna break it up. Usually we have small breakfast. We sometimes even skip breakfast. So our breakfast is usually small, we're on the go, we're um, quick to get out of the house, maybe we have to get to school or work. So breakfast is usually small for some of us. It's orange juice and bread or just get grabbing a banana. 
Then what do we usually do for lunchtime? We have a bigger lunch than our first meal. And what do we do for supper? Supper is typically the biggest meal of the day for many people. So we often tend to wonder why we have problems losing weight. Um, why do we feel sluggish? Well, usually the one thing that we need is this. I hope you can see my illustration okay. So what I'm gonna show you is breakfast should really be eaten like a king. That should be the biggest meal of the day. Then lunch is a little bit more on the lesser side. And then supper should be a lighter meal. And this, if for anyone who's really wanting to lose weight, this is one of the best ways to do it. A breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and then supper like a pauper. And so if you wanna learn more about some uh, recipes and how we typically eat supper and breakfast and lunch, definitely you can um, ask us and we can do more cooking schools to show you what a typical supper would be for uh, us. So our supper is, should be the more lighter meal of the day. And that's really for us is like fruits, all types of fruits and grains. So it's if you wanna um, lose weight. Now, the reason why you should have a good breakfast is studies have shown that breakfast is very good for helping to improve performance. It's also good for memory. They found that students who had a good breakfast were better able to, um, were improving on their test scores, they were able to function better, and they had more energy. It's the same thing for those adults as well. So we really wanna make sure we have a balanced breakfast. We don't want a sad diet, but we want God's life activating diet. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So we're gonna start with our breakfast um, recipes. So I'm gonna, um, I believe we're gonna be able to show you some of the recipes on our PowerPoint that we're gonna share with you. But if not, I will say it while I go along. So I'm gonna call now two of my assistants. All right, so, all right, so I have an assistant here to help me. And we're gonna make our first recipe for you today. And this recipe is called almond milk. Almond milk, you can stand up. So my assistant's name is Naomi. So you can say hi to the phone. All right, and she's gonna be helping us to do it. And here we have Rachel, who you were able to see some of the massage techniques. And I really hope you enjoyed them. I felt even relaxed watching the massage techniques, even though I didn't get one. But we're gonna show you some wonderful recipes today. And these are whole food plant-based recipes. We're talking about recipes that will help, yes. Okay, he's gonna show you the recipe. So just please, um, Jerry, if you can let me know if you can see the recipes and everyone else, if you wanna just unmute, let us know that you can see it. But we're just gonna say it right now while the PowerPoint is coming on, if you wanna write it down, it came on. Okay, so here's the recipe. We're going to use half a cup of almonds, preferably slivered. Now the run reason we use slivered almonds is that people typically like, when we think of milk, we think of something usually white, right? So we're just removing the skin of almonds and we're gonna use the white part, okay? And then we're gonna add four cups of water five pitted dates, that means you make sure that the seeds are removed. And I like to use medjool dates, but you can use any dates that you like. If you're using date pieces, you can use about a fourth of a cup of dates. You can also use honey, one to two tablespoons or to your preferable sweetness. I'm also using two drops, oh, this is optional, two drops of almond extract, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and we're using also a pinch of salt. Now, why whole food plant-based milk? A lot of people don't realize, but cow milk, or usually the uh, milk from animal products, um, is very inflammatory to the system. They also have certain um, bacteria and germs that can cause things such as inflammation. It can uh, cause buildup of mucus. And a lot of people have found that it can increase your risk of many diseases such as cancer and heart disease. So we are going to use a whole foods plant-based milk. And this one you can do at home. You can use any nuts that you like. 
and we're going to use almonds. I really like almonds. It's a very neutral flavor, but you can use pecans, you can use Brazil nuts, and you can use any other nuts you like. You can even try making whole grain milk, such as rice milk or oat milk. I typically Google a lot of recipes, but this is my favorite one. So we're going to use before, hold on one second. She's going to help me put this in the blender. These came with, okay, these came with um, the skin. And what I did was I blanched them, meaning I soaked them in water overnight, or even I boiled them for about 10 minutes. And then they were able to sit for a little bit and the skin came right off. I'm going to just show you how the skin comes off right now. Can you hold this for me? Okay. So here you have one of the almonds. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And I'm just going to show you how easily the skin comes off. I like the skin. It has a lot of fiber in it but you can leave it out. So I'm going to ask my assistant if Rachel can just take that. So please, my assistant, can you put that in the blender for me? All right. Now, as you can see in the recipe, it called for almond extract. I like that because it gives it a nice more almond flavor. Oh, before we do this, I have one special date. So you want to make sure again, like I said, all the pits are removed from it no seeds i've done that before and trust me it's very not grainy so you want to make sure that your pits are removed now what are the benefits of dates for anyone who feels like they're sluggish they don't have enough energy you're going to want to add dates into your diet they help to give you energy they help um, also people who have trouble with constipation you're having trouble going to the bathroom they're great for getting a healthy skin, that glow. And almonds are very alkaline. Now, what is the meaning of alkaline? Some of you have already heard this, alkaline versus acid. Alkaline really helps to produce good blood. And so basically you want to get your alkaline foods from, you know, your alkaline alkalinity from alkaline foods, such as almonds. Sorry about that, tongue twister there. Now we also wanna do um, a pinch of salt. Okay, so can you help put a pinch of salt in there? And I'm going to add, I don't have um, liquid vanilla, so I'm just gonna add powdered vanilla. It calls for two teaspoons. So when you're using powder, you just do about like half of that. I don't know if anybody has seen powdered vanilla, but um, if you're doing it, you're gonna do half of that amount. So you can put that in there. All right. So it calls for that simple, okay? So I'm gonna keep the salt here and it calls for four cups of water, okay? So when you're beginning to blend, especially nut milks, you don't wanna put all of the water in at once. You just wanna put about half just to blend it nice and creamy, okay? So I'm just saving this and once it's nice and creamy, I'm gonna add the rest of the um, water to the blender. All right, so I'm just gonna blend. Okay, so um, now, as I said, I didn't put my almond extract in here, but you can definitely do it when you're making it. It gives it a nice almond flavor. If you try this compared with store-bought almond milk, you'll totally taste the difference. There's such a big difference. It has more flavor. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. A lot of the almond milk you buy in the stores is basically just water and they just add natural flavor. But here you are, you're getting the fiber in it. So now I'm going to add, I'm going to add my, the remainder of my water that I told you. And All right, storage is very important. I recommend glass jars for storing your um, milk. I recommend glass in general. I'm not crazy about using plastic, but glass jars are wonderful 
for keeping it fresh. And this recipe, depending on how much times you use it, how many times you open the jar, it's best to use it like about within four to five days. Um, this is not something that you want to use. Um, you want to keep longer than that, especially if you're constantly opening it, then two to three days really would be max. Um, and also the wonderful thing that you can do is you can add carob powder. I think some of you have heard of carob powder. You can make carob milk. Um, carob powder is St. John's bread. You can um, read about it in the New Testament. John often used it with uh, locusts and honey. Some people said they thought he ate insects, but really it was the uh, tree pot. So uh, you can add this to your smoothie. You can definitely add this with granola, which is what we're going to show you right now. So. Definitely, I really highly recommend trying to make this milk. You really will enjoy it. And after you've had it, you probably won't want to buy store-bought milk anymore. So, okay, I'm going to ask someone if they can um, put this in another container for me, and we're going to get to the next recipe. So, again, refrigerate it. I'm going to ask if we could put this in the cooler. If you can fit the rest of the milk in there, that'd be great. Okay, so our next recipe, we're going to show you this one on the PowerPoint as well. This is a oil-free, sugar-free granola. Now, what often happens with um, granola, we're gonna show you the recipe while I explain it. Okay, not yet, but definitely. So what often you find in granola in the stores is some of the um, major ingredients are the, or the ones they use the most of are the first three ingredients in, on the packaging. And so if you see that sugar happens to be the second ingredient or the third ingredient in a box of granola, you may want to stay away because that means there might be a lot of sweetener, a lot of sugar in there. So I'm going to teach you how to make one um, homemade and as well as um, refined sugar free. Is that right? Okay. So this one is one that you can leave overnight. And we are going to show you how to make that. So I'm going to ask them. I'm going to tell uh, Rachel, if you don't mind taking the bowl out. So what you're going to need here is we have our oats. So we're going to pour our oats. So Naomi is going to help us. And she's my little granola baker at home. Okay, we'll run through the list of the ingredients. Okay. So in our ingredients here for the blended wet ingredients, we're going to use three fourths cup of water. We're going to use half a cup of honey. Um, one tablespoon of molasses, a tablespoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half cups of pitted dates, no seeds. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm giving you two, I'm giving you my, my double recipe. Okay, <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do one third cup of water. Sorry about that, I'm giving you my double portion. Um, we're gonna do a third of a cup of honey, half a tablespoon of molasses, one teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of salt, three, four to one cup of pitted dates, and half a cup of walnuts. This is all gonna be blended together. For our dry ingredients, you have there six and a half cups of rolled oats. You also have there half a cup of quick oats and half a cup of shredded, unsweetened, preferably coconut, and one cup of chopped up walnuts, okay? Now for the dry ingredients, we're gonna put everything into a bowl, okay? All right, assistant, can I get your assistant? <laughs> My assistant is assisting me here. She loves making granola, all right? And then what do you usually add in your granola? I don't know if you can hear her, but if you can, what do you usually add in your granola at home? Besides oats, nuts, do you add anything else? Seeds. What about seeds? seeds? What kind of seeds? You can add sunflower seeds. Okay, so good point. This is a basic recipe. You can always add more things to it, right? So we yeah. can add your zinc. And zinc can come from pumpkin seeds. I definitely recommend that for men. Um, you want to add zinc to your diet, especially now with the coronavirus. I'm not sure if we talked about it. I think we did discuss it, but um, zinc is very... Uh, toxic to the coronavirus. So one thing that they recommend is if you feel like you're being exposed or you have been exposed, um, take zinc lozenges or a zinc supplement, preferably vegetarian if possible. So 
Um, I highly recommend zinc should be a part of a daily diet. It helps men to prevent them from getting prostate issues. And so you really want to add um, zinc and making sure you have a very balanced diet in general. Okay, so we're going to add our dry ingredients. We're going to add our shredded coconut and we're going to add our walnuts, okay? Now I'm going to show you some tricks of the trade. So you're going to have to scroll down to see this. Um, or you're going to have to move the phone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you some of the little tips that I do at home. And some of you probably do this yourself. Okay. I'm going to have um, Chantal, if you want, oh, here, Rachel, if you mind. So just to make life easier, and if you um, want to chop up your walnut, um, I have here a meat tenderizer. <laughs> I don't use this for me, but I actually use this. I'm going to show you a little bit later how I use this, especially somebody asked, um, I think it was about how you all use garlic. And so I'm going to show you how we've done garlic in our lifestyle center. And this is why I have it at home. I use it to break open garlic. So I'm just going to chop my walnuts. All right. Okay, there we go. Got some chopped walnuts there. All right, can you add it to the all right, and then we're just gonna add a pinch of, um, actually, we're gonna do that later. So this is just a very basic recipe. Again, you can add whatever nuts you like. You don't have to stick to my recipe and then we can just remove these bags just for, so you don't have to um, add um, this. And I'm gonna have my little assistant, um, if you can help me to gently and carefully mix this. Now we're gonna do the uh, wet ingredients. So she gently, so Rachel, you can help her. Okay, so now in this, I told you we're gonna need water, a third of a cup of water. Okay, we're gonna need half a tablespoon of molasses. Okay. So I like molasses. Molasses is great for the red blood cell. So if you're feeling uh, fatigued sometimes, you may want to add molasses. I think it's a, a daily need to add it to your diet. So I'm gonna add half a tablespoon here. But what I like to do with molasses is just having hot cereal in the morning, I add it into my hot cereal. And especially it's wonderful with millet, okay? So I'm gonna also add now my dates that have been pitted, three fourths to one cup of dates I mentioned to you. So there we go, our dates. And then we're gonna have our half a cup of walnuts. Again, you can also use other nuts if you like. This walnut is gonna kind of be like the fat replacement. The, the usually a lot of times also granola has oil. So this is gonna be our um, substitute for the oil. And then we're going to add half a cup of honey to this. All right, so Rachel, can you just show them the bananas? I'm gonna also show you a little tip that I do at home is that if you want a banana flavored, we're not gonna add it to this one, but if you have like bananas that are super ripe and you don't like to use them, some people love to use them. I love to use them for baking. So if you have really ripe bananas and you really don't care to eat them like that, you let them go a little too long, what you can do is you can add them to your granola. Just add them to the blender one or two bananas are fine. You can add them to the blender and basically you'll have a nice banana flavored um, uh, granola, okay? Now we have vanilla. Somewhere there is my vanilla powder. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add also a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you're watching your blood pressure, don't add salt, you can omit it, it's fine but we're just gonna add a, um, a bit of sea salt just for flavor to this. And again, I'm gonna add my powdered vanilla. Um, I'm gonna do half because powder usually calls for half of the rest, um, the amount. If you're gonna use a liquid, definitely use the full amount. All right, I'm getting ready to blend. You can take this today. You can take it today. 
All right. So it should be nice and creamy. If not, let me blend it just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna double check. Now, Rachel, do you mind showing them the parchment paper? And we're gonna line the parchment up. Okay, sorry, I'm just gonna blend again. So now, um, while I'm still blending, because I have to do it a little bit more, you want it to be smooth, and I still have a little bit of chunks. So what we're gonna use before I um, blend it a little more, I'm, Rachel is gonna just show you. What we're using is just regular baking pans, but because I'm not using any oil, what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it with parchment paper. And parchment paper helps to pre prevent it from sticking to the pan. And I like to use this when I'm baking because it just also helps things to come off easier and cleaner. So she's just gonna line it. Um, okay. Okay, so go ahead. All right, so I've got my line pans there. And this would even make a really good spread, I think, for bread. It's a little sweet, but you can definitely use this as a spread for bread. Now, um, just for time sake, because I have a few other recipes to show you, you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. All right, and um, definitely you can see it's a very thick paste. And yes, thank you. Okay, if we can wash this for me and bring it back, I'll need it for myself. So yes, definitely, oh, no, not, this, not yet. <laughs> Gather up the fragments, as Jesus said, let none be lost, so scrape it. What does daddy say? Scrape it, scrape it. All right. Yeah, in our home, we have a scrape it rule. Let nothing be wasted. Okay. All right. And then, so we can take that away. All right. So now we have our wet uh, mixture in here. And you want to really make sure that you coat the granola with this wet mixture. So like I said, you want to add banana. That's perfectly fine. Um, now, what if you want to add dried fruit to your granola? Some people like it, some people don't. Now, I'm sorry here, but I'm going to ask for extra gloves because I'm going to get my hands dirty. Okay, so I'm going to really get in there and make sure that I'm coating the granola with that wet mixture. This is fun for the kids. So, and this is so if you're adding, wanting to add um, dried fruit, like let's say you want to add, okay, don't, <laughs> you want to add raisins to it, you don't do it when you're baking it. You want to add the raisins after you're finished baking, because what you'll find out is after you take the granola out of the oven, you will have puffed up grapes. Trust me, I found that out. Okay, so as you can see here, my granola is at, um, for slightly moist and it's covered up with a wet mixture. Okay, and Rachel, do you mind um, pulling up my shirt, please? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I have here two pans, and because this is an oil-free, okay, we're going to now, we're just going to spread it out thin. Okay, you can go ahead and spread out the other side. And so you wanna just spread it out as thin as you can, um, especially maybe you'll find you'll have pieces of walnuts. You want to just break them up if you like. Now, if you want clumpy granola, some people like a hard granola, you can keep some of the mixtures. Like you see how I'm kind of just squeezing it together to make big clumps. You can do that. I prefer because it's oil free. 
it's a little hard if your teeth can't handle that much they can throw it yeah you can throw it there um you may want to just make sure it's broken down a little bit more now this recipe will be baked in the oven i like to do this at night because i bake it in the oven overnight at the lowest temperature that could be 170 175 for any of you but bake it low um, for about seven to eight hours leave it at night then in the morning you'll wake up and you'll have your granola ready to grow uh, to go and i'm going to ask for the granola please now again like i mentioned here's a granola that we have here i keep it in a very uh, airtight jar okay we can take these out so now you can see we have a very thin layer can you see that all right and these make wonderful gifts you know you make a whole bunch add your you know after it's done cooking add your raisins to it and then you can make nice gifts for people to have definitely for the holidays or for a gift you can put it in a little jar tie a ribbon around it and you can even add like your a little card that says the ingredients of the granola um because i know these days people are concerned about nut free about nuts so definitely this is your granola this doesn't really last in my house past one week but that's between my husband <laughs> all right so our next recipe if we can just return the board to me and if you get a free swim thank you so much okay our next recipe and we have our blender is going to be scrambled tofu all right so again if you have any questions save them towards the end um, don't forget them write them down i we have a knife somewhere in this beautiful area okay okay so this is not i'm going to show you a basic scrambled tofu this is your egg replacer for scrambled eggs okay so if i can wash this too um and we'll need the blender soon we're going to make a cheese sauce to go with this recipe all right okay so i'm using a non-gmo uh tofu this is water packed this is not there, I know there's like things called silk tofu. Um, are you looking for? A, oh no, I didn't. I think it's clean. Okay, yeah, that's clean. So this is this is a water packed tofu. This is not usually. It's always going to be in the fridge section. That means, and this is what I like to use to make scrambled tofu. Now we're doing this oil free. Okay, so you're going to have to come around maybe a little bit on this side. Okay, all right. So with this, I'm going to be using, um, instead of oil to saute, um, I'm going to be using water, okay? So I'm gonna get my pan heated up and water packed tofu. Actually, you may wanna use a little bit more. So I have there about maybe two tablespoons of water. That's gonna be my oil replacer. And I have also here some chopped onions, definitely, so your chopped onions are anti-inflammatory. That's something you want to incorporate more into your diet. The actually most powerful onions are the red onions. And so they're um, high in quercetin. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh yes, we have to go through. Yeah, there's a recipe for it too. Okay, so we're gonna share the recipe with you first. And that's good, because my pan's gotta get hot. So in our recipe, we have half a medium sized onion. Now, if you can use the purple, you don't mind, you know, purple onion, that would be great, but I'm gonna use white one for today. Half a medium sized onion. We're gonna use two cloves of garlic mint, a fourth of a cup or about two tablespoons of water for sauteing. We may wanna open the window because it will smell like onions and garlic in here. <laughs> two cloves of garlic mint stuff the water, and then I'm gonna use um, two cups of, or I'm gonna use a whole block of tofu. So here my tofu is about 16 ounces of a block. Um, and this is, I like to use this tofu, so I'm gonna ask if we can open this one up and drain the water for me. You can drain it in here. And then I'm going to also use some seasonings. I'm gonna use two teaspoons of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm also going to use here, salt to taste so that's dependent upon what you would like one and a half tablespoons 
of fresh parsley, but if you're gonna use dry, you always want to use about a third amount of dried um, versus the fresh. I also am going to use one and a half teaspoons of turmeric. Turmeric is a wonderful um, spice that you can definitely use. It is one of the spices that you can use for um, if you have allergies, especially now it's the spring season is coming upon you. Um, you can try mixing about a half to one teaspoon of turmeric with pineapple juice and drink that down daily. Um, it really helps to prevent um, the symptoms of allergic reactions, um, as well as some people use charcoal. So brother Pedro, this is a nice thing for children. I'm gonna just share with you a little bit about my tofu. So I'm gonna put in my pot, uh, my garlic. So you have a spoon there. Okay, so right now I'm sauteing my garlic and onions in my water, okay? All right, that's good. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna share with you a little secret about um, what I do with tofu and to give it a more um, chicken-like texture. Okay, I know we're going on whole foods. Why do we want to try things that like taste like the similar thing? But let me tell you what I did with my tofu. I actually froze my tofu and defrosted it. So you can see it has more of like a, a different texture, like you can actually pull it apart. And what some people do with this is they coat it in flour and they can sometimes bake it to make it look like fried chicken. But we're not doing that today. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mash it up, okay? So I'm gonna get my assistant. You know how to mash and Rachel can help you. We're gonna mash it up until it looks kind of like scrambled eggs. Now someone's saying, but it's not scrambled eggs, but it tastes better than scrambled eggs. So I have here my, Tofu. So we're gonna really, um, my onions, and we're really gonna um, mash it up. So my onions are now translucent. They've been frying for about, sorry. They've been frying for 10, uh, for five minutes, okay? And so now I'm going to add my tofu into this. And so what you can, yeah, you can mash it just. And since my tofu is a little bit more harder and dense, Sorry, you can see that there. I'm just gonna, <laughs> gloves, yeah, another pair, sorry. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my crumbled up tofu. Now I'm sorry you can't smell this, but it smells really good. And this can be, this is just a basic recipe, okay? So now, we're going to lower the heat a little bit to medium. And now I'm gonna add my seasoning, okay? So in here, I already read to you, we are using about, sorry, can you turn the page? We're using our onion and garlic powder. Okay, this calls for two teaspoons of onion and a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm going to also add in my turmeric. And remember, it calls in for one and a half tablespoons of fresh parsley, but because I'm using dry, I'm using about a third less. So that was about a teaspoon of parsley. You can also omit it if you like. And I'm going to now to give the color, but also like I mentioned, the benefits, the medicinal benefits, I'm gonna add my turmeric. Okay, now it calls for one and a half teaspoons. You don't have to add it all if you don't like it because turmeric can give a very powerful, overpowerful um, flavor. So here we have it. Now, if you feel like it's starting to dry out a little bit, you can add a little bit more liquid. Now, this is just a very basic recipe. You can add anything. I've added cilantro to my tofu. I've added um, chopped up tomatoes when I was sauteing the onions and garlic. And I've even added a little bit of coconut milk. It just really depends whatever you want. You can add cumin powder to give it a little bit of a Spanish flavor. All right. You can add this to tortillas. When you're making burritos, you can put some of the scrambled tofu into a um, tortilla with some potatoes or whatever you can have, um, or even you can make it for a lunch idea. You can add some fresh spinach 
and some potatoes into our tortilla and you have like a burrito to go. So some of you I know, and this can last you for several days. Again, in my home, this will last probably two days. So you can even add this to salad, okay? So this is not finished. I'm gonna take it a step further, okay? So I'm gonna add more to it. All right, so now we're getting ready for the cheese sauce, okay? Like I said, this is just very versatile. I'm gonna show you how to make a whole food plant-based cheese sauce, all right? So we're gonna go to the next PowerPoint. Uh, no, if we can wash that and get that ready for me. I'm sorry if, all, if anybody's getting hungry out there, <laughs> but definitely what I like to do is I just like to serve this with a side of toast and some jam and that's it for my breakfast with a, you can even do like a fruit smoothie, you know? Um, just buy yourself lots of fruits, lots of things that you can just easily blend up what you like. You can even buy frozen fruits, keep it on hand, okay? So this is not finished yet. We're gonna take it, like I said, we're gonna take it up a notch. Who says that? Wolfgang Puff or something? <laughs> My father's a cook, so he used to say, we're gonna take it up a notch. So I used to grow up hearing that. I don't hear anyone laughing, so I feel bad. <laughs> okay, thank you for the moral support. <laughs> All right, so like I said, we're gonna add something to this. We're gonna make it into a uh, Western omelet. And so what we're gonna do is um, to make a Western omelet, you're gonna add cheese sauce to it. And if we have the plunger, thank you. So you can add peppers to it, great. Um, and you can add whatever you want, I'm gonna need my salt by the way we forgot to add salt to this so like i said salt to taste you have the spoon there the little silver spoon so again you know you can um, just add one to one and a half teaspoons i'm just gonna add one teaspoon because my cheese sauce is also gonna have some flavor too so again um some people say what is the best salt you know, you can always ask that and you can always write your questions on the chat. So I really like the pink Himalayan salt. It's full of nutrients and minerals, but sea salt is just as fine as well. Um, but the Himalayan salt is very nutritious and I believe it's not as salty. So you may have to always be careful with how much salt you're adding to ingredients because some are not as salty as others. All right, so we're gonna make our homemade cheese sauce. This cheese sauce is great with pasta, it's great as a, um, you can add it to a burrito, cheese sauce, whatever you eat cheese sauce with, you can make some homemade chili beans um, and add this cheese sauce, baked potato, add the cheese sauce on it. And this is what I'm gonna show you now. So the recipe for cashew cheese sauce, are we showing it online? Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a secret. On the recipe, I wrote one cup of cashews but to save you money, sometimes what I do for blended recipes, like the cheese sauce, I actually take half a cup of cashews and also half a cup of sunflower seeds. So I break down the amount to make it more economical. And also it's just as nutritious too. So instead of one cup, I'm gonna use half a cup of cashews and half a cup of sunflower seeds. You can also use half a cup of cooked brown rice to replace the cashew amount, um, the half of the cashews that you're removing. So you could do half a cup of cashews, half a, cook, half a cup of cooked brown rice. Then we're gonna add one cup of water to help blend, two tablespoons of sesame seeds. This helps to give it a more, um, this is going to add to the tangy flavor as well as the salt, the onion powder. You can see there two teaspoons of onion powder an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, an eighth of a te teaspoon of dill weed. I know that sounds like a strange thing, but it really makes a nice cheese sauce. Half a cup of pimientos. Now for today, we're not using pimientos, but we're actually gonna use red bell pepper or orange bell pepper. You can use red bell pepper, you can use yellow bell pepper. So um, bell pepper can replace the pimientos, but if you have pimientos, definitely use that. They'll give it that orangey color that cheese sauce has. And two tablespoons of lemon juice, gives it a nice tang. So we're gonna put all our ingredients, it's that easy. Okay, you guys wanna help me? My assistants have been waiting patiently. Okay, so one of you can go ahead 
um, open up that and put that in our blender. Our tofu is waiting for us. Um, you can add the water. Okay. So again, we're adding the two tablespoons of lemon juice, all of it. Yes. Okay, can you add, open up that one. I'm gonna give that to Rachel. Okay, I'm gonna have you give an eighth of a teaspoon of dill, Naomi. All right. Okay, now two tablespoons, two of these of lemon juice. Okay, so this also the same thing. Um, this keeps about four to five days. Our tofu is getting really nice and crispy. Some people like that. How many did you do? Two? Yep, okay, good. Two, and then we're gonna add about, um, we have our salt there. We're gonna add about salt. To, um, here in our recipe, we have one and a four teaspoon of salt. So there you go. Yeah, it looks like a lot. Oh, and let's not forget our sesame seeds, two tablespoons, right? Okay, go ahead. Okay. It's that easy. Just throw it all together and we're gonna blend it. Okay, so we can take this guy. All right, we can take this to go. All right. Now, of course, if you're using red bell pepper, you definitely will get a more orangey color. I don't know if you can see that well on the camera, but that's our cheese sauce, all right? Does that smell good? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so like I said, we're going to now add this to our tofu. So we are going to, you're not gonna add all of it, just add as much as you want. And you can chop up some peppers in here. Just gonna give it a nice flavor. And then if, like I said, if you want, you can put it with tortillas, make a burrito. Does that smell good, guys? Nobody can smell it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I promise when I go to New York, I will do a cooking school for Jackson Heights if you invite us again. <laughs> Is everybody still online? We could just say hello. Oh, they're on mute. Okay. All right. There you go. So there's your scrambled tofu. How easy was that? Hello. Is that super easy? Hi. Yes. Good to hear feedback. <laughs> okay. So yeah, here's your scrambled tofu. Um, I'm going to ask my team if you could grab this for me. And you can place it on top of this so it's not gonna burn the table <laughs> all right so you got it okay so if we can put this in a container um to save it okay the last breakfast recipe that i'm going to show you is the chia fruit salad now can you chia fruit salad okay Chia fruit salad in the recipe, I call there um, for you to use three to four fruits uh, chopped up. Careful, one second. Three to four fruits chopped up. And I'm sorry, can I have a the plant-based milk in the cooler, coconut? Go up or down? <laughs> Is that for me? Okay, so here I'm going to use, and I need a wooden spoon. If somebody can grab me a wooden spoon. Um, so I have here for my mixture, I have pineapple, yes, pineapple, pineapple, uh, sorry, pineapple, apple, and I also have in here some oranges. So high in vitamin C, 
Um, and let me tell you something, when you're using pineapple, don't throw out the core. The core has one of the best nutrients of the pineapple. It has the bromelain, which is helpful for digestion. Usually we cut out the core and leave it, but you wanna use that part. You wanna add it to the blender if you don't like chewing on it and just save it, you know? But in here, I'm using the core and all. So I have here some oranges for my vitamin C, some apple for fiber, and basically all of this has fiber. But one of the fruits that I like, the combos that I like to use is you can definitely use mangoes, strawberries, bananas, pineapples. That's a nice combo, peaches and pineapple and mangoes when the summer fruits are out. So you definitely want to use whatever um, fruits are available and especially the fruits that you like. So um, three to four fruits is a good uh, good mm. rule of thumb, okay? Even when making smoothies, you don't want to do too much mixtures. You definitely want to have um, a good amount. Now, chia seeds. I'm sure a lot of you have been learning about chia seed on the news. Is it really healthy? Yes. You, thank you. <laughs> you definitely want to incorporate chia seeds into your daily diet. It actually has five times more calcium than milk, and it has three times more iron than spinach. It's a very, um, it's a great antioxidant. And also it has alpha linolenic acid, which basically helps with brain function and it boosts your mood as well as um, it's an immune booster. It helps to cleanse the colon and it normalizes blood sugar. I mean, if you Google it online, you'll find out all of this information. The Aztecs, it dates far as back as the Aztec Indians. They used to use this on long journeys. They found it so, um, so valuable to them that they even used it as an exchange for, um, as a money exchange. They used to use it for money. And so um, chia seeds used to help them for uh, long endurance. It gave them stamina for long endurance journeys. So they would just bring chia seeds with them and they would, were able to go long distances. So you really wanna incorporate this into your diet. My husband swears by flax, but I love chia. So. Um, one of the things you also want to do is you can freshly grind it. I don't recommend buying ground seeds like ground flax or ground chia when you're out in the store because they turn rancid very quickly. So what I do is I buy a whole and then before we're about to eat, we usually grind it. If we have any leftover, I keep it in the fridge. As soon as you buy nuts, especially um, flax or chia, put them immediately in your fridge or freezer to preserve them and keep them fresh. The other thing too, is we wanna remember that God made these things and he gave him a protective covering. So like, for example, nuts, as soon as we um, remove the protective covering, we um, basically encourage rancidity. So oftentimes you buy nuts in the store, bring them home immediately and put them in your fridge and freezer to help preserve them and they don't get rancid. So for this, we're going to make a chia fruit salad. So not only are you getting your fiber, you're getting a good amount of calcium and iron. And like I said, if you feel depressed, especially, you know, as you know, maybe the weather is not so great or during the winter time, you wanna make sure to incorporate chia into your diet. It's a mood booster. It helps, you know, people with depression. So we're going to add this into our um, jar right now. So Naomi's going to add all of that one fourth cup of chia. We're going to add, um, Chantal, if you can find me the honey. Sorry, <laughs> the honey is somewhere. We're going to add three tablespoons of honey um, again. And we're also going to add two cups of the plant-based milk. So for this one, I'm going to add, thank you. And also there's a jar of chia already made in the um, cooler. It's already mixed. So I'm going to add here two cups of coconut milk. This time I've used almond milk for the one I'm going to add here, but I'm going to use coconut milk, two cups. Okay, and Rachel, if you could put this back in the cooler for me. And we're going to add three tablespoons of honey. So it's okay. You can do less if you don't want too much. You can also use maple syrup. You don't have to stick with honey. Okay, and now what do we do? after we, okay, so now we're going to shake it. Okay, go ahead. So <laughs> she's very gentle on her shakes. Okay, good. So basically, um, thank you. 
chia absorbs about 10 times its weight. So even though you see it in a liquid state, what's going to happen is it's going to absorb the liquid. And I'm going to show you one that I made um, last night. Uh, close up. Okay. So I'm going to show you this one that I made last night and it already absorbed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add now the absorbed chia that I let sit because what you're going to do is after you mix it, you want to let it sit for about an hour. The best would be overnight, about eight hours so that it can absorb. And since it's absorbable, it kind of fills you up. So for those of you who are wanting to lose weight, you can or incorporate chia seeds and you won't eat as much. It'll actually fill you up more. So it can actually help to lose weight. And like I said, for those who are diabetic, it helps to balance your blood sugar. You may want to be careful with the honey. Um, so what they're doing now is they're gonna shake it up to get all those chia in the bottom. So what I do sometimes also, yeah, I'm gonna show I remember when they, yeah, we need a knife. I remember when they had those, um, those exercise machines that you would shake the dumbbell. <laughs> So this is an exercise for you. So this will also help you to lose weight. So, okay. So you're going to let it sit. Okay. What you really want to do is um, right now we, we use a butter knife to just kind of stir that up, but we don't have one here right now. So, oh yeah, thank you. And then we'll just have to wash this. So you want to just kind of dislodge the ones that settle to the bottom. Okay. So... Um, it's just basically, if you're going to grind it, just add it to your um, salad. You can also add it to a blender and just blend it up with your smoothie if they can just wash this for me. Okay, so now what I'm going to tell you is after shaking it for about 30 seconds, what's going to happen is it's going to settle and this, it's going to separate a little bit. You don't want that. You want to shake it again. So we're just going to let this sit. I'm going to show you what's going to happen, uh, what happens to it. But while we're doing that, I'm just going to add now, and I'm going to have my two assistants here. We're going to add the already uh, gelatinized and already absorbed chia seeds to the mixture. I'll tell you something. If you like tapioca pudding, this is a great raw um, option. Um, just let uh, Rachel mix it. Okay, now. I'm going to share with you, okay, we can take this, one. we can take that tray. Now, I'm gonna share with you a little tip, okay? Um, so while she's mixing, so you wanna make sure you mix it really well. So in there, I have about half a pineapple. I have about three apples and three oranges, um, the small clementine one. Now this isn't just the cooking school. So I hope you um, are looking forward to more things that I'll share with you today. It's not just the cooking school, but I'm also gonna give you some tips. Now, one of the things I do is I save the orange peels. I don't throw any of them out. And you can see here, I've saved the orange peel, okay? And what I like to do is with any of my citrus fruits, whether it's oranges, it's grapefruit, or it's lemon, I like to save them and I'm going to make a cleaning disinfectant. So I think I have a, like, I'm going to make for you a cleaning disinfectant that is going to smell really amazing and zero waste. Okay. So no, no uh, hold on one second. We're just going to, oh, the chia milk, because I'm going to show them how it dispersed. So right here, um, I'm going to take my orange peels. If I've saved any lemon peels or any grapefruit peels, what I do is I add it to a jar and I'm going to pour it with vinegar. This is a cleaning solution, okay? So what I've done is I've covered the vinegar. Um, I've covered the, sorry, the orange peels with the amount of vinegar just to cover it. And you can even take a huge bucket. And I, again, this is only for your citrus fruits. <laughs> Are you having fun there? <laughs> okay. So what I do is I just pour the vinegar into the citrus fruits, and then I just keep adding each day as I have more citrus to add into it. And this is a wonderful thing. You let it sit for two weeks, you strain it, and then you're gonna have an amazing smelling vinegar solution for disinfecting and cleaning your home. 
So you can also add essential oils to it like tea tree oil or lemongrass to give it a nice smell or even lavender. I've used lavender essential oil, but this makes an amazing um, disinfectant and also amazing cleaning solution. It's not gonna smell like orange, like very powerfully, but it'll just be enough to give you a nice hint of a citrus smell. And so don't waste your orange peels, use them however you can. So um, just, hint for all of you so what you can do with your orange peel try it at home it's a really nice um, uh, cleaning solution so you can kind of see that the liquid has kind of separated um, just a bit but you want to distribute that chia seed evenly so all right Rachel I'm going to give you a workout she's just going to shake it one more time for about 10 20 seconds now what I like about I like to use um, coconut milk okay so I like to use coconut milk and it gives it a nice flavor to any of your fruits that you're doing. And, okay, all right, can I get this to be taken out? And then there's your ambrosia salad, your chia fruit salad, all right? Again, if you want, you can even just blend that in the blender for a, a nice, really healthy, nutritious smoothie. All right, so I'm just showing you a cleaning solution here and I'm gonna have them take away. So we're done with our cooking portion, but we're not finished with what we're gonna show you. We have now, what we're gonna do is show you an aloe juice concoction. Thank you. Sorry, can I get a sharp knife somewhere? And I have my spoon. No, there's no recipe for this. I do have a recipe for the next one, which is nature's penicillin. No, you can take that away now. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, and do we have the stick blender? Okay, you can go now if you want. Okay. Unless you want to drink some aloe. Not aloe? <laughs> okay, aloe. You can take the chair, Rachel, because she's not coming back. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you for assisting me. Oh, did you get to say bye to everybody? Okay, come and say bye. Thank you, Naomi. Bye-bye. They say thank you. <laughs> All right. Good. So, um, okay. So we're going to make for you an aloe smoothie. Now, many of you know that aloe is wonderful for burns. It's also great for helping heal the digestive tract. If you have acid reflux, if you have ulcers, um, if you have, um, oh, do I smile? <laughs> Okay, do you have, if you have any digestive issues, this is really great to use. If you even have constipation, you want to consider trying aloe. Um, also, studies have found that aloe has asamanin in it, which is a cancer fighter. So for many of our cancer patients at our lifestyle center, we give them aloe juice as part of their supplement. They drink it about 30 minutes. 30 minutes before their meal time, and we make it into a smoothie. Now, if you can get the big aloe plant that they usually sell, I know they sell them in Asian stores in New York. If you can get the big plant, that would be best. And I'm just gonna show you, but I like also to use the young plant. If you have young plants, if you have your own aloe plant at home, what I would just do is to cut off the spine on the sides of the aloe plant um, and just blend up the young aloe leaves um, just by itself. And I would drink about a half a cup before meals. And that means breakfast and lunch. And you just also want to be careful. If you have a reaction, maybe it actually loosens up your bowel movements. You may want to slow down on it. So maybe you want to start with a fourth of a cup before you take a whole half a cup. And so I'm going to show you the nice way to drink aloe because a lot of people don't like aloe, but it's powerful. What did, uh, like I used to tell people bitter is better. So <laughs> and the more bitter it is, the more cleansing, the more healing. And so, as I said, asamanin, they have found that it has cancer fighters in them. So you're gonna find that from the aloe leaf. So these are your young plants, but I'm gonna show you what you do if you have the older mature plants and you wanna use them for um, an aloe drink, okay? Some people can eat it by themselves. I admire you, do, you know, do whatever you can, just get aloe into your daily regimen. Aloe can also help to stabilize blood sugar. So for diabetics, you want to use aloe um, in your diet. 
Okay, so if you had a big plant, we're just gonna give you an example. If this was a really one of those huge aloe plants that you can find in the store, what I would do is I would skin it, remove the skin, and with my spoon, I would scrape the jelly. This is the merciful way of taking aloe without the bitterness. The plant, the skin itself, especially for the bigger plants, they can be a little bit toxic to the um, digestive system. So you don't want to use the outer skin if it's an older leaf. But if it's a young leaf, it's not as potent. Oh, look at that, looks so yummy. Okay. I drink aloe without anything, but I'm gonna show you how to take it. Um, that can make it more tolerable. So yeah, that stuff is gonna heal your digestive system. Okay, if you have young plants, all you have to do, like I said, remove the spine, okay? Remove the spine, and we're just gonna add it all in there, okay? So, and I'm gonna have my assistant try it for you. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm uh -huh. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, she's willing. Everybody caught that, right? Wave in the chat room if you heard that. <laughs> okay, so this is a secret. This is how to make aloe tolerable. Here I have freshly squeezed orange juice. Now, if you don't have the time, you can use store-bought, but I really like to use the fresh stuff. It's just um, a bit more healthier. And so orange juice, like we said, oranges are high in vitamin C. And as you know, people are treating coronavirus today with a lot of vitamin C. But let's do it from this way, okay? So this is a great guide also if you want to boost your immune system up. You really want to use this for your um, daily diet. How much can I use? Start again, I said, with a fourth of a cup. Add more as you're able. So any citrus uh, juices can help, like grapefruit juice, they can help to cut the bitterness of the aloe. I really don't taste that bitterness if I remove the skin. But for some people, they, it could be really intolerable. So can you make me a clean um, a nice clean cutting board for the next recipe? Okay, and don't go away because you're gonna try it. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> okay, so grapefruit juice, orange juice, you can even use, um, some people even use grape juice to help it to um, be more um, palatable, but I'm going to use freshly squeezed orange juice. You can add more orange juice. I've used about, yeah, and, uh, two cups, uh, sorry, two large, two medium-sized oranges, but you can add more. This is just to help it go down. I don't know. I want to say the yeah. yeah. Okay, Rachel. All right, Rachel's gonna be brave today. All right, so here is our blended up aloe smoothie or aloe juice. Mm, smells like orange. I don't know if we should zoom in on her face. Okay. Okay. Just take a little bit. Okay, show the camera. It tastes good. So it's not too bad. All right. And are you very um, sensitive to bitter taste or you just? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. So then, um, oops, sorry, we have a mess here. Okay. So yeah, that's how you can get aloe juice. So we have another blender going because we're gonna make the second natural remedy. So again, I really highly recommend aloe. If you know anyone who is battling with cancer, encourage them to try aloe. Now you wanna be careful because if you are taking certain things that might um, contra, uh, maybe a contraindication to that, you just wanna be careful um, because like for some certain things, like if you take up too much garlic, and I know we talked about it, if you're taking blood pressure medication, you just wanna be careful with even cer certain of these things. If you're taking them for a medicinal supplement or a natural remedy, you also wanna be careful how much of it you use. We have a cutting board somewhere. So now I'm gonna make for you 
it's the um, Russian penicillin. Does anybody know why they call it Russian? Did it come out of Russia? <laughs> okay, yeah, we can use that for my cutting board. Okay, so we're gonna make for you the nature's penicillin and we do actually have it on our PowerPoint for you. So, um, but really it's a combination of your um, three citrus fruits, which is your lemon, your orange and your uh, grapefruit, okay? We're also gonna use half of a medium sized onion, three cloves of garlic. And do you guys have my hammer? My hammer. <laughs> Meat tenderizer, yes, that's what it's called, okay? So I have three cloves of garlic. I have my three citrus fruits. I have my essential oils. I'm going to use peppermint oil and some people even use eucalyptus oil, very helpful for the respiratory tract. So we're gonna use that today. I think in the ingredients says cayenne pepper. Um, cayenne pepper, a pinch of it is helpful to um, help with the circulation. I typically don't like to use it, um, so I'm going to do without it in this recipe, but you can add it, just be very careful. It can be an irritant to the digestive tract, so you want to just be careful with what you add into it. So again, um, this is a wonderful vitamin C packed natural remedy. It also has your garlic and onion, which is antiviral anti-inflammatory, so it will help with colds, with flu, with um, helpful with the coronavirus, just even helpful to boost your immune system. People will say, well, how can I boost my immune system every day? Try this smoothie, okay? It's antifungal because of the garlic and the onions. It's very helpful in being antifungal, Naomi. Um, and also it's antisocial. So I always say, if you're gonna, if you're a family, like if you're gonna eat garlic, let make sure everybody else eats garlic. So we'll be antisocial together. So yeah. So um, first off, last time, um, Pedro, I think we may want to see the bottom of this. Somebody asked, how do you take garlic if garlic is too hard on the stomach? Um, and what is the best way to take garlic to make it very potent and helpful? So as you know, garlic has um, a wonderful property in it that helps to um, lower the blood pressure. So we usually give this to patients when we want them, when we want them to have um, to help with lowering their blood pressure. Now this is what we do. Okay, so I've got my meat tenderizer, and this is also high open garlic anyway. So you're just gonna. So we're gonna crack it. We're not gonna break it. We're just gonna crack it until it slightly opens. So you can see I didn't break it like all the way till it's um, absolutely nothing. But in this, we're gonna use three cloves of garlic. Now my garlics are small. So I'm just gonna, when I do this, we slightly crack it. So you just, you feel that it's, so you can see it kind of like mashed it. And what we do is we let it sit for 10 minutes. After letting it sit for 10 minutes, we're gonna steam it for five minutes, just so it can help it to be more tolerable because sometimes people complain that garlic burns their stomach. So this is one way we usually give it to our patients so that it, it can be a little bit easier on the stomach. Now, a little word of advice here. I took this garlic um, because I wanted to show you. If the garlic starts to sprout, it's ready for planting, no. But if you use this kind of garlic, be aware that this can, um, hurt your stomach and it can cause burning. So when you start to see it sprouting, try not to use it for steaming. If you wanna take it as a medicinal um, or for a natural remedy, you can use this for cooking, it should be fine. But for steaming it the way I'm telling you now, with the 10 minutes letting it sit to help, you know, release the uh, wonderful components in garlic, um, you're gonna, you don't wanna use these kind that have started sprouting. So this is just how I use my garlic. So, um, Rachel, if you don't mind cutting this up into like chunks so it can blend, okay? So we're going to use our garlic. This one though, for the nature's penicillin, we are gonna peel it. So you can see here that it didn't destroy my garlic when I pressed it with the meat tenderizer, it just cracked it open. So that's what you want when you're steaming garlic. So um, what we're gonna do is, because these are not organic. Now, 
some people have made nature's penicillin with organic fruits. And when they make it with organic fruits, they use everything. They discard nothing. So, but for us, since these are not organic, I'm going to peel them and add them seeds and all to the blender. Okay. And if you can open up the garlic for me, you can use my, my hammer. Okay. So again, you can use these um, skins to make your disinfectant. In fact, ladies, who has my little vinegar with orange peel disinfectant? Okay. So if you can, I'm not doing a very good job here, but if you can try to save the white part of the fruit, the white skin rind, because it is very nutritious and it also has a lot of the properties that help to fight um, disease and to fight viruses. So as you can see, I'm just adding it seeds and all. If you are interested in also another immune booster, there is what is known as grapefruit seed extract. It is, of course, like it says, it's the seed of the grapefruit, which they have found to be powerful in helping to um, fight viruses and <laughs> to fight germs. And whenever you start feeling sick, you can take grapefruit extract. Where can you find that? I believe many health food stores have what is called GSE, grapefruit seed extract. So again, I'm using everything of my grapefruit. And here is our orange. Okay, who has my vinegar? Oh, here. So again, with your peels, just use your, I'm gonna put my citrus in here and stuff it up nice. I'm gonna, I usually put a date on it sometimes to let me know when the two weeks are up because like I said, I would usually let this sit for about two weeks before I use my, I'm bringing you back the disinfectant solution or the cleaning solution. So you can see there I've added my other stuff. All right. So who's willing to try this nature penicillin? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you find a little container you can all use to drink it? Because I don't think I have enough containers. All right. Okay. The, so you can see that I added the seeds and all to this. And now we're going to add about two to three drops of peppermint oil. Oh, oh, that looks like two to three. <laughs> okay. Eucalyptus, you can add some of this. Helps with the respiratory system. How long can you keep this? Okay, this is also another thing that's good for two to three days. You don't wanna keep it too long because just like everything, once you make it into a smoothie, um, you are basically um, oxidizing the product. Okay, so we're gonna blend it. Do we have our plunger? Okay, thank you. Yeah, Okay. All right. Here we go. So this is our smoothie. Is that the cup? All right. So you can see it's kind of thick. You want more? Yeah. Is this for you or somebody else? Okay, wait, go in front of the camera. <laughs> okay, it's a little thick, so, but that's good. But for some people, if you want it just a little bit more thin, you can add just a tad bit of water. Um, but how you take this is usually for adults, it's about one tablespoon throughout the day, um, which would equal one cup a day. I've even taken one cup in an hour when I was feeling really bad. Okay. 
Um, and for children, it's half a teaspoon. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Make sure I'm out of the camera. How is it? This actually isn't bad. Because I had a lot of ones from Vanessa in. Maybe small. Okay. This, this, like, this is milder. Yeah. This can go down. So, <laughs> anybody else? Okay. All right. Okay. So basically, um, as you can see, it would be a, a lot more potent if we left the skins on, and it would probably be a lot more bitter. But because, um, again, we want to help you to encourage you to try it, it's a lot less bitter. <laughs> All right. So it's okay. Okay. So I think that that's my last remedy for you all. And then we can put this again. Oh, you didn't get one. Um, we can um, definitely save this. So for, again, adults, one cup per day is a recommended dosage. If you can handle more, that's great. For children, half a cup. And keep it, if we can transfer this to a glass jar. Again, I really highly recommend keeping it in glass jars in your fridge. <laughs> everybody's passing it around okay so that's it and like I said um, especially with the onions it's great to help um, with circulation so we are adding the onion if you can if you want to use a more powerful onion you can use the red onion that's really um, a wonderful um, powerful onion to use and the other thing too is that since you're using onion and garlic and all these wonderful things it helps to increase circulation which also helps to increase sweating. And especially when you're fighting a fever, you want to have the body sweating. I know often people tell me, well, I don't sweat. That's not a good thing. You do have to sweat. Sweating helps to eliminate toxins. That's actually a blessing given to us by the Lord when he gave the man sweat because he knew that toxins would build up in the system. So anything that helps to promote sweating is really good for um, the body. So exercising in your home, doing whatever you need to do. Um, these are great ways, taking a hot and cold shower as we told everybody last time. These are all wonderful ways to help with increasing your immune system. Any questions? I think that's it. I can take questions or anyone in our team can take questions. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed and definitely um, Yes, we can do more. As we said, if you're interested, our team can show you also healthy lunches. So just a reminder, I don't know how many people may have joined in afterwards. You want to make sure to lose weight, improve your memory, and your, um, improve your performance. Big breakfast, right? Eat breakfast like a king. Lunch like a queen. And supper like a pauper. Okay, so yes, any questions for anything that you saw today? All right, so we're going to open the mic to everyone who would like to ask questions. I see here in the chat that, you know, uh, somebody asked if you have any recipe for the vegan uh, mayonnaise. Yeah, can you please, yeah. Mayonnaise recipe. Hello? This is a question from, from the chat. That can you please give a recipe for a vegan mayonnaise? You hear me? Hello? Hello, this. There's a question here asking if is there any recipe you can share for a vegan mayonnaise? Sister Saholi, I don't think she hears you. I'm on mute. I don't know. I, I can hear you. Yeah. But I don't Hi, think Nikki, so. you hear me? Hello, Nikki. Do you hear me? Hmm. I don't know. 
Do you hear all of you in the in the Zoom? You hear me, right? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you well. Yeah, I, I think can it's hear you, but I don't think Nicole can hear you. Hmm. Nicole, do you hear us? I don't know. Let me try. Hello, Nikki. Oh. Hello. Yes, we have question, and I ask it to Nikki, but I, I don't know if Nikki hear us. Sister Sahoe, maybe you could put that in the chat. Would she read that? Can she see what's in the chat? She's waiting. Oh, no. He tried to leave and then would come back. So just bury them a little bit, brothers and sisters. How do you see about the program today? Well, uh, well, we are waiting. Okay. For all of us who can hear, how do you? see the program today. Did you learn something from it? Yes, I did. Mm. Yeah, hey, I, learned I, something, I learned something new with the Chia and the aloe. Yes. And I never knew about the disinfectant. I never knew. I, here I was throwing away all these orange peels and lemon peels. I didn't realize. Yeah, I learned that too. So I'm going to not waste them anymore. Yes, amen. I would like to try those recipe today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do you learn today, brothers and sisters? So those are orange and grapefruit peels. Did she add um, vinegar? Yes, I think she, she added uh, vinegar. Okay. Just let it sit for a week or two, if I'm not mistaken. I have to go back to it and watch again after. And Brother Chris, you said that you missed the ingredient. So we can go back and watch it again. And talk so nice. Uh, Page. Yeah, I got I got those when they show them again. No, oh, good. Yeah. Let's keep talking, everyone. You went quiet. What else do you learn? Hello? Everybody is still here? 
still here, Sister Sohoi. I, I had shared some things. I'm wondering if anybody else there wants to share. Yeah, you want to go ahead, Brother Chris? No, no I, I had already shared some things. I, I'm just wondering if there's anybody else who wants to share what they learned. No, thank you, Brother Chris. Yeah, that's why you want to hear. Maybe they're reviewing their notes. Maybe. <laughs> But they, but they were shy, camera shy or shy. Yeah. I like the scrambled tofu. Mm -hmm. So that one I was interested in. That's great. Glad that um, not the way she did it, that she doesn't use oil, that's water. And learn something new about that because when I do it, then I use oil. So I would like to try. Yeah, I'd like to try it with the water. Same here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I saw people here, um, a dozen of us. So. I don't know if anyone else wanna share what they learned today. Uh, yeah, there are some people, Sister Saoli, that are not really sure about uh, the tofu because they say that it is uh, it causes it, it it causes uh, cancer. Hmm. So you can ask that question to them. Yeah, I mean, how uh, we hope we can uh, get her back so that we can see more information about that. What what I was thinking that you know if you eat too much of everything then it causes side effect but you know if you eat it in moderation then there's no harm that's what I was thinking because in everything if you don't have moderation if it's good for us then no in everything is moderation but you can throw that question to them yeah because you see if we are if we are not eating egg and we have the tofu as a substitute, then, and if you you eat that most of the time, then mm. there's a question on how much you're eating now. Yeah, so you can ask that question because as I say that, you know, in everything, you have to do it in moderation. That you're not going to eat tofu every day. But maybe you want. Ready? Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Somebody's asking about food. That's oh, showing me first. Okay, there. <laughs> oh my God, it's yeah. showing me. Hello? All right, can you guys hear us? Yep, this I can hear you, but I'm upside down. I'm upside down. You're upside down again? Yes. Yep. All right, well, let's, see, let's see something. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Better. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's see something. Is he, are you still good? Yeah. Oh, it's good now. Thank you so much for all the demonstration, but there's a question. So, Brother Rodell, yeah. go ahead, ask your question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a question about tofu. Some are hesitant to eat uh, tofu because it causes a rise of the estrogen level in the body. And uh, if it's estrogenic, it, it encourages cancer growth. So what's your study or uh, findings about that? Okay, so the, I know that there's already a lot of studies that say that tofu isn't good for you because it has estrogen in it. But the phytoestrogen is a plant estrogen, which is a thousand times weaker than the body's own human estrogen. So it doesn't actually affect the body. It actually can help lower one's cancer rates than actual estrogen that comes from your body or animal product, for example. So it, you have to look into it. It's called phytoestrogen. It doesn't have the same effect as the hormones. Uh, the estrogen that people are concerned about that is a carcinogenic. And I heard someone did say a good, thing, a good point was that you don't eat tofu every day. They actually found that in Asian countries where they have tofu, it didn't really increase the rate of cancer at all. It's just like 
For example, our concern is who is putting out the studies now that talks about tofu being bad for you because. Oh. We're losing her. Can you, hear, can, you, can you hear her? No. Yeah. Nikki, we lost you again. We hear you. And I hear you, Nikki. It can actually help to decrease one's um, risk of breast cancer. And okay. Now. It's off and on. May be um, an issue. Um, like, for example, um, things. No? Uh, the audio is really bad. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Wi Fi, Wi Fi problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can have her say that again because we lost you again, Nikki. It's on and off. We cannot hear you. No. No idea. Okay, I hear. Yeah. Hello? We're yeah, we're sitting now. Okay. It's on and off. It's okay. On and off. It's on and off. Good now. Now, they say, can you repeat it again, please? Okay. The estrogen that has been found in soy is actually a thousand times weaker than the own body's human estrogen. It's called phytoestrogen, which is a plant-based estrogen. It doesn't affect the body like uh, the other estrogen or other hormones that you would usually get from animal-based products. And so one of the things they have noted was, like I was mentioning first, you have to be careful of the studies where they're getting that tofu is bad for you because they're also saying that coffee is good for you and uh, chocolate is really good and encouraging people to eat chocolate when we have also found studies that chocolate has chemicals in it that actually can cause migraine headache and other things. So knowing where the studies come from really helps to encourage you because sometimes people have a, an agenda that they don't want people to eat those things that are good. But for many years, people from Japan have been using tofu and soy and it actually has been found to lower a person's risk of cancer. They found that it actually helps to lower one's risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer. So um, everything should be done in moderation. I heard a comment that said, you know, that it should be done in moderation. You wouldn't want to be eating it um, every day. You want to have more of a whole food. So the soybean is better than the tofu. But definitely, I wouldn't really um, say that you should leave out tofu altogether. Um, they are using it in many products, which you want to also be careful because if you see products that say lecithin or um, other things, that's also a soy product. So they also use it in many commercial goods. I've, I've seen products that they use it in Oreo cookies. They've used it in um, cereal products. So really soy runs in a whole um, bunch of items. So you might want to look at what is a soy uh, origin because it runs not just in tofu, but it can be in multiple other items, packaged goods as well. So um, I'm not against tofu usage. I'm just, I'm just encouraging to use it moderately. And so it's also better than using, you know, other things that they process with soy that is very refined. So I hope. Is that sure okay, so your question, Brother Rodel? Yes, yes, yes. The, benef the benefits of aloe. Um, so basically, aloe is also good for the digestive system. 
It's good for people who have problems with ulcers and also for acid reflux. But one of the things that we use it for here, specifically not just for digestive issues, but also for cancer. We, um, we encourage our patients here to take about a four to a half a cup of aloe juice before meals. That's about 30 minutes before they eat their breakfast or lunch. And with that in the aloe is something called a compound called asamanin, which is a cancer fighter. And so you really want to use aloe. It also helps to lower blood sugar. So for diabetics, I would be safe to encourage them to try using aloe as a supplement and even lowers blood pressure. For the nature penicillin, so that's for aloe. I hope I answered that question. For the nature penicillin, it is full of vitamin C. And as many of you have been hearing now, they're using vitamin C to help people to um, fight the coronavirus. They also use vitamin C, as you know, for flus, you always hear vitamin C packets, take it for flus or for colds. So basically the nature's penicillin was a, a natural remedy for flus and basically even to help fight the coronavirus. And I said in my presentation, because there's onion in it, it helps to increase um, circulation, which helps to increase sweating, which if you have a fever, you want to sweat. So anything that you can do to encourage sweating, even I know some of you are home-based right now because of the stay-at-home order, but whatever you can do to help boost your immune system and encourage sweating is good. And that nature penicillin can do that to help fight a fever and bring it down. But God gave us a fever, which is a good thing. So people are worried. It just depends um, the course that the fever runs. You want to be careful of that. But fever is a good thing because it helps to improve circulation and helps the white blood cells, which are your policemen to help you fight infection. So you want to sweat. You want to do anything that would, you know, wrapping yourself with warm blankets, you know, whatever you can do, put your feet in hot water, anything that can help sweating, take the nature's penicillin. Those are all good. And that's what I showed you the smoothie for. Any questions? Follow up, yeah, follow up on aloe. Aloe, okay. Yeah, follow up on aloe. Um, there, there are some uh -huh. times when you cannot get uh, fresh supplies of aloe. So uh, yeah. are there like aloe extract or any preparation that you recommend so that it has the same nutritional content as, or all, you know, a reliable okay. uh, nutritional content? Yeah, okay. Um, so if you can't get fresh aloe, which I do encourage you can, um, if you can try to get an aloe plant and help it to grow at, the, at home. But if you can't get an aloe plant, there is some aloe, um, mixtures like lily of the valley not i would say it's kind of a mixture because they do dilute it with water so there is lily of the valley which is probably um one of the good brands for an aloe juice um, uh -huh. or an aloe um product that you can use don't uh, buy anything that if it says again sugar in it you don't want to buy that kind of aloe because again yeah Usually, um, I've seen this product in the Asian stores. They like aloe drinks, but they'll put tons of sugar in it to make it tasty. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to buy that kind. So um, health food stores get the aloe that has as minimal um, ingredients as possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, but thank you. Uh, if you go to grocery store, like Indian store, yeah. Asian store, they sell those uh, yeah, aloe aloe. Leaves. That's where we get flowers. Yes. So, yeah. And I know I've seen them in Asian stores too. Yeah. Big aloe plants. So yeah, if you're using the big aloe plants, as I mentioned, do not use the skin. Only scrape out the jelly of the aloe plant because the skin, as a bigger, the bigger it gets, the more um, very toxic it can be and it'll it's not going to kill you but it will make you go to the bathroom very badly so yeah for lack of a better explanation okay it's a laxative thank you yeah so just the jelly part any other questions Is think for, uh, ask any you questions on massage yeah on the russian penicillin uh you said yeah. that 
uh, for adult, they can take up to one cup. Is that one straight shot or you have to divide it in several doses? You can divide it to one tablespoon um, throughout the day. Um, but basically when you're really sick, one tablespoon would be a recommended just to help uh, preserve the, uh, just to help keep the immune system going. Mm -hmm. But if you're really sick, if you're coming down with a fever or you're coming down with, you know, an infection or some kind, you can take, I've done one cup uh, through in one hour. So that could be just like, you know, um, that's without eating anything. I would just do the uh, Russian penicillin and just drink the one cup in one hour to help fight. If it was a, I felt like I was coming down with a bad fever or, you know, whatever it was, you can do it in, in a very concentrated amount. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. If you have also any questions about massage um, or, sorry, body rub. Uh, you can also let us know as well. Yeah. So, and yeah, if we come to New York, we can also be happy to do a cooking school for you and your church if you uh, invite us again. <laughs> so let us know. Okay. Yeah. And you can actually get to taste the things. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think we're I'm good. 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 Yeah. No, not, Thank you. no questions on the chat room. Nothing. Okay. All right. So breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and supper like a pauper, everyone. And I can tell you it really will help if anyone wants to lose weight, anybody wants better health, definitely try this way of eating. And try it for 10 days, just like Daniel, and see what God will do. So eat for strength and not for drunkenness. And we, I guess we, if there's no other questions, we are going to uh, sign out and we pray that you all will be safe in New York and you will have a blessed day and we're going to pray so uh, let's close now with a word of prayer all right father in heaven we just want to thank you for the church family in New York we want to thank you for how you've been continuing to protect them and preserve them and we just pray that you will continue encouraging them, Father, in uh, doing things to help with their health and also their spiritual well-being. Because you have said in your word, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So we just pray that for them as a church family, continue to bless them, make them a light to shine to others, whatever they've, they've been learning, that they can share it with those around them. For Father, we know that in these last days, men's hearts are failing them for fear. But Father, you have given us um, not a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So please help us to share that with others, to give them hope too in a God who is merciful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so all right. much. God bless. Mm. God bless you all. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Oh, All right. Thank well, you, Sahuli. Thanks for joining. Hope that you learned something today. I did.